Welcome, my name is Keith Tolan, and uh, glad to have you here with us as we paint on the patio. And um, I'm going to go ahead and just start, and my surface here is going to be on canvas, and I like working with the dark, and working from the dark area and coming to the lighter area. So step one is going to be to prepare that background. And in most cases, even though it's dark, I don't want it to be 100% black. So it looks a lot more black in the beginning. And I'll add a little bit of color. I'm going to add some violet to sort of warm it up. So that it's not just a, a total void, neutral area of space. And I'm going to start working from the top down. I'm not a fan of working wet on wet. And when I begin to add the figure, I also start from the top down. I guess I've already let the cat out of the bag. The goal is to create a figure coming from this black background. I like working with color. Uh, painting in many ways is a uh, it's an illusion. It's the goal of the artist, whether it's uh, abstract or even realistic, to convince the viewer that what they're getting on the canvas is what the artist has, has in mind, what the artist has constructed. One of the advantages of working with acrylic, especially when you're working outside, is that it speeds up the drying time. And I like that. Again, as I said earlier, I'm not a fan of working wet on wet. So my first step is to prepare the canvas to get a really good surface for the paint to build on. Um, I would categorize my technique as a stacking process. I stack one color on top of the other. I do some blending, but um, blending of color is not a major factor in my technique and how I work. I'm a fan of organizing shapes, making those shapes work, building one shape on the other. And um, now I have my surface prepared. Next step is to find an interesting subject to work with. Now that our background's in place, step two is to build the foreground. Now the foreground is going to be made up of shapes. So the first shape that I'm going to put in is basically like this. Uh, you can call it whatever you want to identify, uh, a little heel. Uh, but this is shape number one. And um, building on that shape, I'm going to be looking at two factors. One, the dominant color in there. Uh, I work from, again, as I said earlier, from dark to light. But also, my goal is to bring in colors that work together. We call that complementary colors. So with my base color being a heavy red, uh, next I'm going to need to apply uh, the opposite of that. And I said something a little earlier that I sort of uh, am being challenged by right now, is that working wet on wet, I'm not a fan of working wet on wet. So I'm going to try to pick up the pace here. and. Um, bring in some other colors as I try to go back to my original. I'm working from a small figure. I'm a little fan of this figure. My goal is to 
bring in my details, one shape at a time. I'm working from left to right, pretty much like we would read. Again, painting is about building that illusion, about that conversation between, really, the surface and the brush. I want my brush to dominate in telling that story. I like the fact that this top area has already dried, so it does make it a little bit easier to work with, while my mid area is beginning to dry. And for me, I can notice an immediate difference in working with the drier surfaces as opposed to working with areas where the paint is still wet. So I want to allow my brush to bounce between my background space and where I like to build my subject. I'm going for the center part and building up my subject. And it's about just putting in shapes, putting in shapes and um, my goal is that that brush is going to work with that canvas to tell my story. Now, they're going to need me to cooperate, but for me, the biggest success is going to come from old mother nature, working to dry my surface so that as quickly as possible, I can get back to the whole idea of working and not allowing my paint to move as I apply it. I want it to stay in place. And that's one of the disadvantages of working wet on wet. But um, our goal here is to use the time which is about 10-15 um, minutes to tell a visual story using paint. And I'm starting to get some drying elements here which I really like. Um, my goal is there's an image in there somewhere, and it's up to me, along with this brush, to find that image. I like working outside. I like working and painting during the summertime, because as I said, I'm working with acrylic. And the faster my acrylic starts to dry, the more cooperation I feel that I'm going to get in trying to find my subject. When I put that paint down, there's a lot of movement, there's a lot of motion, and what that tells me is that my canvas is still not quite dry enough. And in my initial steps, 
I started with my dark surface. Second, I came in, started putting my mid-range in. And I want to work with the paint as much as possible before I even think about trying to add any highlights and bring out any light areas. So, it's a matter of just building on color. Building on color. My goal is that if I can convince myself that I've given enough light to that dark area that something is starting to emerge, then I want to leave a little bit of room for the viewer to say, okay, I think I see what you saw. And that's the image. And so, the goal is to continue that relationship between brush and canvas. And really to me that's all painting is. That whole connection between canvas and brush. And the two are sharing with you the story. And in the end the realization of that story is that final product that we see on canvas. Sometimes it takes a little bit more paint than others. And once I feel that I've gotten as much as I can from my reference material, then for me, the next step is what can I bring to the design? That's just unique to me, without the reference. And I think I'm almost at that point where I just want to let go of my reference and start just working a little bit more independently. And that's the power of what we call modern painting. Because modern painting draws a lot from just being expressive and hopefully getting a feeling from your viewer. So I'm at a point now where I'm going to Abandon my reference. All right, and so now I'm going to come in with some highlights and um, because we started with dark, our last step is going to bring in just a little bit of light. And it doesn't have to be exactly a white white. Uh, a little bit of light area in there. And um, in most cases from that point, we're done. And what this gives us is, we went from a blank surface, 
And now we've got a design that we can build on. A little composition here. I hope you enjoyed it and stay safe. Thank you.